Okay, so we're looking at factoring special cases. 5.6 factoring special cases. And special cases we actually saw earlier on this unit when we were expanding. Those special cases were difference of squares and perfect squares. So difference of squares was what? What did it look like when we had originally a difference of squares? So here was the answer. Do you remember what the question looked like? Well, hopefully you remember that the question looked like a minus b times a plus b. So they have both had the same beginning, same end, with a plus or minus and a plus and a minus in each individual one. Why that turned out to be just a squared minus b squared is because a times a gives you a squared, a times plus b gives you plus ba, minus b times a gives you minus ba, and then minus b times b gives you minus b squared. Well, the minus plus ba minus ba turns out to cancel each other out. That's why every difference of squares will result in a special, unique binomial, which is a, looks like a difference, meaning minus, of two perfect squares, two numbers and, uh, and or variables that have perfect squares within each question. The other thing we looked at with special cases was a per perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial looked like the following as our final answer. What did the question originally look like? Well, if you look back in your notes, you'll find out that it looked like a plus b all squared. Or, let's say you had a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. What did that look like? Well, that looked like a minus b all squared. So the answer in the trinomial, so a binomial squared, will always result in a special, unique trinomial. That's right, folks. Not a binomial, but a trinomial. So here are some examples. If you're asked to factor x squared minus 9, what would that result in? Well, that would result in, this is a perfect square, so x is squared, and this is a perfect square, which is 3 squared. x squared minus 3 squared is a difference of squares, so we should be able to write x minus 3 and x plus 3. That is the difference of squares for x squared minus 9. Now, perfect square trinomial, x squared plus 6x plus 9, will result in, a perfect square trinomial of x plus 3 all squared. Because remember how we expanded it. It was x squared, x uh, multiply everything you see, and the last term squared. So that's how we get x squared plus 6x plus 9. All right. Now, it is not necessary to be able to recognize a perfect square trinomial. You could easily factor this the way you know how using the product sum rules, and then do your final answer in the proper form if you needed to. All right, so let's look at some examples that go with this. Example number one, you're asked to factor the following, x squared minus 4. So on this particular page, we're going to look at just the difference of squares. So all of these, I'm going to give you the hint, involves difference of squares. Now knowing this, we look at the first one and say, oh, I know how to do that. It should be, and it will be, x minus 2 and x plus 2. What about the next one? Well, something is weird about the next one. None, uh, neither the first half nor the second half are perfect squares. So we need to have a perfect square. What can we common factor out of here? That's right, folks, an x. Take out an x, you get x squared minus 121y squared. What does that give you? Well, x stays out, but inside here is a difference of squares, so we can factor that to give us x times x minus 11y and x plus 11y. So the next one, c, should be relatively straightforward looking here. This is a difference of square. 9 is a perfect square here, so 9 and 9. 16x squared y squared is a perfect square of 4xy in each piece. One's going to be a plus, one's going to be a minus, and that's all, folks, for part C. Let's look at part D. Common factor, 
because neither of those, especially are perfect squares, and even if they were, don't forget, you must common factor first. There's a reason. So you take out the 5, you're left at 25 minus 9y squared. What does that result in? That's right, a difference of squares inside those brackets. So you get 5 times 5 minus 3y times 5 plus 3y. All right, last one. 3x squared plus 27. Let's common factor the 3 out. We're left with x squared plus 9. Now some of you may be going, hmm, I know it should be x plus 3 and x plus 3. Wrong, folks. That's not correct. Someone else might be saying, no, it's got to be x minus 3 because we're trying to uh, get rid of things. Well, folks, nope, it's not it either. I want you to note something really important. You're taking out the 3 out of each of these terms, left with x squared plus 9. We do not have a rule for sum of squares. We only have a rule for difference of squares. So this is a difference of squares. All right, folks, let's move on forwards. Okay, we saw E, and now we're going to go to F. X squared plus 12X plus 36. G, X squared minus 4X plus 49. H, 12x squared plus 84x plus 147. 8i, 50k squared minus 120km plus 72m squared. What are we going to have here? Alright, some of you might be thinking this. What we're going to do is we're going to try and factor these using the other one, the perfect square trinomials. We did the difference of squares and now the perfect square trinomials. So the first one, what two numbers multiply to give you 36 and add to give you 12? Or you use the special type of factoring that I taught you with difference, sorry, with perfect square trinomials. So what's it going to be? It will be x plus 6 all squared because this is a perfect square, this is a perfect square, and the number that's perfect square for both of those is 1 here and uh, 36 here. 1 times 36 is 36. That's our product. Our sum is 12. What are the numbers? 9 and 4, uh, nine and four make 12, but that's not what we want. Well, 6 and 6 make 12, so that's what we have here. So if we had originally done the question again, we would have done product sum rule, x plus 6 times x plus 6, and that's how it got us x plus 6 all squared. But you can just do the blue step, folks, and get the full marks. x squared minus 14x plus 49. Factor again, we're using difference of squares, you'll have x minus 7. All squared is our final answer. Next one, 12x squared plus 84x plus 147. What we need to do with that one is common factor. What are we common factoring? 4x, uh, 3 out of each piece, so you get 4x squared plus 28x plus 49. And guess what, folks? This is the final answer down here, but you can look at the possibilities of how to get these questions. If you understand one method more, you're more than welcome to use it. The idea is eventually you're even going to factor faster than what I'm factoring here. All right, i. Let's look at the value for i. Okay, we're just finishing this off. h will be the following, and that's how we got the final answer. Let's look at i. i says common factor first. That's what we did here. Common factor, we find out the product. The product is 900. The sum is negative 60. How do we get that? Well, we're going to, to first get our product and sum, which is positive 900 and sum is negative 60. Find two numbers, multiply, give you negative 60, and add to give you, uh, n sorry, multiply to give you 900 and add to give you negative 60. That's going to be 2 times 25k squared minus 30km minus 30km plus 36m squared. So what are we looking at here? Well, we have 2 
bracket 5k times 5k minus 6m minus 6m times 5k minus 6m. And the final result will be 2 times 5 times k minus bm times 5k minus bm. Why is that the case? Well, the rule is, is that we have to get this as our final answer. How we get there, as long as it's following a logical mathematical processing step, you will get full marks, irregardless of what they say on the other side of the world. You'll get full marks. All right, now, let's continue an example. Example number two. Find an algebraic expression for the area of the shaded region. Part B. Write the area of expression in factored form. All right, and here are our numbers inside there. And we need to find the first information. Algebraic expression to find the area of the shaded region. Well, to do that, we know that it's a square. Okay, so it will be a square given the unit values. And we're to take 3x plus 8 all squared. And the reason we're doing that is that will give you the area of the purple, the outside of the purple, minus x minus 2 all squared. And what we're going to do is expand and collect like terms here, folks. And we get 9x squared plus 48x plus 64 x squared minus 4x plus 4. We're going to collect like terms and we get 9x squared plus 48x plus, sorry, plus 52x plus 60. This is our solution to this. This is our area. Now, next step is to actually complete part B. Part B says, okay, now that we've done all this, this is an area expression, part B, what we're going to do is the following. All right, now, how can we factor this? And the way I had you learn this in class was to treat this first piece, which is not similar to the second piece inside the brackets, as yellow. And then we have a minus, and then this step is the red. Red, so yellow squared minus red squared has to equal a number, and that will be our, uh, sorry, that number is very, very important, okay? All right, folks, here we go. So yellow squared minus red squared is the same as yellow minus red times yellow plus red. And we do that, we plug in the values. All right, and we get an answer inside the brackets, we get, Simplified expression of 2x plus 10, and the final one, 4x plus 6. All right. One more video, folks. Now, important to note here, we can common factor out of both of these pieces, and that's why we pull it out here. Here is a strong recommendation. Never, never, never factor until you've had someone look for the common factors. Very important. Okay, so these are questions that were done in class that were asked to complete. 7a on page 246 and 7c on uh, page 246. Now it's 15x squared minus 2x minus 8. All right, what we need to do here is we need to learn how to factor the old-fashioned way. The idea is we don't use a calculator. And what you have to do is be able to factor this. That means 4x squared has to be broken up into here and here. Whether it's x and 4x, x and uh, uh, ridiculous, uh, like really high for, uh, air conditioner, which isn't a problem. Uh, but what we're doing here is trying to find the values that we're looking for. 4x squared is going to be 4x here and x over here. 5 is going to have a 5 here and a 1 over here. So you expand it and you get the following. 
Okay, so we know it's got to be 4x or x. Let's try that. If that is the case, then our x. Okay, so 4x. And we got 2x times plus 1 times 2x plus 5. All right, last one. Example C. Look at the product and the sum. The C is, well, it's going to be negative 120. And the product, sorry, one more time. For this question, our product is going to be negative 120, and our sum is going to be negative 2. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 120 and add to give you negative 2? And let's look at possibilities here, folks. One second. Okay, so we have our product of negative 20. Let's recap again. Product of negative 20, sum of negative 2. How do we find the values? Well, we know it has to have what two numbers multiply to give you negative 120 and add to give you negative 2 is negative 12 and positive 10. So we need to make negative 12 with the factors that give us 15 and 8. Again, we need negative 12 and positive 10. So let's find 10 first. 10 will be the following. 5x times 2. That will give us our 10. And our negative 12 that we're talking about is the outside. That gives us negative 12x. Negative 12x plus 10x is going to give us negative 2x. Again, one more time, when we look at expressions like this in factored form, you find out that you can break up 15 into two pieces and negative 8 into two pieces such that the product and sum rule work. But this requires less writing. So it's up to you, but this is another way to be able to complete this question. All right, folks, have a good night. Have a numerical day. Take care.